inviting me here um, because I discovered a piece of heaven uh, yesterday <laughs> and today and the place, the weather, and especially the people. I am just so grateful and excited. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, because I'm a visual artist, so I think the best thing is just show a picture and tell the story at the same time, okay? So can we have the light off, please? <laughs> um, I want to, yeah, back. Um, I think my life, um, my path um, really start with my work at the Village of Arts and Humanities. And uh, um, I tell you a little bit how I um, went into community work. I didn't really didn't intend to, and it just kind of happened. And I also didn't have trauma, or <laughs> I do, you know, like a lot of healing. Uh, like we want the healing project the main focus of the day. Um, but I think uh, it, it, I had a very nice life. I had loving parents and loving uh, siblings, went to good schools and whatnot. And so um, I came to the States in the, during the 60s and then um, I had a nice teaching job. And so everything was nice, but I felt something was missing in my life. And I just went and searched for it, and I think it has to do with also the migrant um, experience, immigrant um, experience, who am I, and uh, and so forth. And so um, it's by um, chance I visited North Philadelphia, that's inner city North Philadelphia, so-called the bad land. If you can, you try to get out. Um, you, and then if you are outside, you don't go in. Um, it just um, it happened, you know, to long story short, um, I was invited by Arthur Hall, who um, has an abandoned, uh, I mean, Arthur Hall, um, who was a wonderful African-American dancer, and his place is just up, the, the big wall you see there. and. Uh, by in the that was in eighty six, um, eighty-six. By that time he um the North Philadelphia was really um suffered all kinds of illness, um, a drug and, and uh, poverty and brokenness and whatnot. So he saw my work and um, he said, why don't you come and do a create a little garden on my abandoned lot? And so um, I usually just jump into action and don't think um, too much. And so I said, oh, yeah, why not? Sure, I'll do that. Um, so th at that time, there was only one little piece of land um, next to his, his, uh, his building. And so I wrote a proposal to Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. And uh, I didn't think anybody would respond. I didn't take my work seriously. And so when they gave me $2,500, I was so surprised. Man, somebody gave me money for my proposal. But after the initial happiness, then I totally got frightened. And I said, wow, what do I do with that? And uh, so, and also by, at that, by that time, the city has leveled 10 abandoned houses, so now I have 11 pieces of, uh, of abandoned um, uh, house lot in my hand. So I said, well, you know, I've got to talk to professionals. And so when I went to talk to um, sculptors, landscapers, they said that, well, you don't go in, you're an outsider. People don't like um, outsiders, and you're an Asian, um, Asian American, um, you don't belong to live there. And kids are going to destroy everything you build. You don't have enough money. It's a, dr a drop in the bucket. So you should do, you should run the feasibility study and forget about the building. So I said, wow, experts' words. I need to listen to them. So as I was um, writing the letter, say, the scenario has changed. I could not do it. And, uh, the little voice in me, I think that's what um, kind of changed my life. 
the little voice in me said that if you don't rise to the occasion, the best of you will die, and the rest will not amount to anything. Just like that. And so, and I was, then I said, this gets a little serious. And I didn't want to look myself into the mirror, and so I cowered um, years later. And that's how I stepped into this, um, th th this project very reluctantly. And so, um, since I know how to paint, but I just about not knowing anything else. And so I went to Arthur and I said, how, how do I, I need help. So he said, go and find Jojo. Jojo is that man with the, with the baseball hat. And so Jojo heard words on the street. There is a woman looking for him. So, so twice he was at his door and he left. He wanted to have nothing to do with this crazy woman. But the third time he was tying his shoelaces and I, 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 I tracked him down. I said, Jojo, that I, I shared with him of building a little garden um, on the abandoned life. He lived right in a kind of abandoned house. He renovated a little bit next to the park. And he had no job. And so he said, why not? And uh, so he, um, because he was a very tough man, he is always with his bandanas and knives and hammers and all kinds of things, all hanging out walking on the street and always angry. Everybody's scared of him. And the, the kids adore him because he's the tough guy in the neighborhood. And years later, I mean, when I look back, I understood why he was, um, was so angry all the time because the world was always trying to put him down. So he was trying to defend his manhood. And here I was. I said, Jojo, could you help me? And then immediately, it changed the situation. So I did everything not knowing really how to do it. And I think it was through the process, this is the reason why I want to show you first the Village of Arts and Humanities because it was 18 years of my life in there. And I learned everything I do later through this process. And uh, so I realized that from the beginning, all my weakness was the re were the reason why this project lived on and took on new life. Okay. So anyway, I mentioned um, one cannot prepare to design. One can teach um, how to design for a place so destitute, has no life, and totally chaotic. That's the empty lot. Okay. So I walked in and I said, "How do you do this?" And it's interesting, so um, I didn't have design, so I did everything wrong, actually, kind of backwards. You know, I didn't have big idea. I was totally scared. <laughs> I didn't want to go in. I didn't want to work with children. I was frightened of them. <laughs> the wild energy. And uh, so, so I just simply looked at the place, and I saw a stick in the middle. And I just pick up the stick, and I drew a big circle. And I said, let's start from here. So again, looking back, then I realized that I was looking to find who I was. I was trying to find my center. And it was so long, I was a very, I'm still a very, very late bloomer and a very slow learner. And so in the 20 years, trying to find out what I am about, and uh, so the search for my own center, I feel that's what's unfolding. And there's no kids in, in North Philadelphia, in inner city a lot of time. There's no, no activities for the children. And so he, they saw the children, saw me and Jojo poking around. And they said, wow, it looks like they were, having, they were having fun. So I already have all kinds of shovels and spades and brooms and kids like. So when they came, can we come and help you? Sure enough. And so the place has no trees. So we need something growing. We didn't have money, but the children helped us to, play, to create trees. Now, <clears throat> this is cement trees. It looks just plain ugly, isn't it? So, but Jojo was so happy. Every day he would water the cement column. Every day, in the morning, in the evening. So I said, Jojo, this is cement. You don't have to do that. <laughs> and, but he said, Oh no, you don't understand. This is yin and yang. This is the spirit. You have to 
water. And you will see how the cement tree sprout to branches and flowers later on. And so the word one summer in 88 was so hot, 95 to 100 degrees for, for um, two months. And that was the time I was teaching at the University of the Arts. That was the only time I could work there. And so then I said, why no adults helping us? And Jojo was so surprised by my, my question. He said, helping us? They were laughing their teeth off about our project. So I was uh, stunned. And of course, I was hurt. We're working so hard. Why would they laugh their teeth off? So now I'm looking at the sculpture we did with the paints peeling off. I'm laughing my teeth off also. 